everybody, my name is Jessie Marion Davis. Welcome along to Aurora Play. Today we are looking at Richard Strauss's Oboe Concerto performed by Aurora Orchestra in the 2016 BBC Proms. I am delighted to be joined by Principal Clarinet at Aurora, Timothy Orpen. Welcome, Tim. Tim, there's some incredible writing for, for your part throughout this, uh, almost moments where it feels like a duet between you and the soloist. Um, did you enjoy performing this piece and, and what stands out for you about this music? Yeah, it's one of Strauss's great wind pieces. Um, that period of, of Strauss's life is often referred to as the... Um, Indian summer, so right at the end of his life. So Strauss was actually 80 when he was um, writing the Oboe Concerto. Um, so it was written um, just in the aftermath of the um, Second World War. It's got some incredible writing for um, all of the uh, wind instruments. And um, yeah, in, I mean, the slow movement in particular is, um, isn't one of my absolute favorite moments. demanding for you I mean you make it sound easy I was watching the the footage of it back today um is it a technically demanding piece for the clarinet Strauss has always got you know plenty of challenges but I think what's particularly hard about about this piece is just trying to be together with the soloist um because obviously especially in the Royal Albert Hall he's a long way um in front of you um and um it's it's, there's a lot of music which needs to line up and that's 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 particularly difficult. I'm struck when watching Aurora's performance of this that Francois, the soloist, Francois Leleu, is an amazing uh, performer, obviously, and he, he, he seems to be an incredible communicator. He's often moving around quite freely and he sort of turns to the wind quite a lot uh, in moments where you're, you're playing together, I noticed. Um, was, was he a, a sort of... Um, an easy musician to collaborate with. Oh yeah, I mean he's what he's one of the greatest wind players of today, and um, he's he's a he's an especially easy musician to work with because um, he's got a perfect technical control of the instrument, so the music just just comes straight out, and um, and he's he's a really nice guy, and um, he's a lot of fun as well. So it was it was it, it was a real pleasure. Tim, would you mind sharing with us your favourite? melodic fragment from the piece. Of course. Thank you so much. What movement was that from, Tim? That was from the second movement. So Tim, you've been with Aurora Orchestra from the very beginning. Um, what a journey it has been. Uh, could you tell us some of your sort of top memories? Yeah, no, I was one of the found, founder members with, um, in fact, um, Nick, uh, Nick Collin and I were um, roommates in the National Youth Orchestra. Um, and I think, I think that that's something that is, that has definitely um, changed the atmosphere of, of the orchestra because, um, you really get a sense that your friends and colleagues um you that you've grown up together everyone is there because they want to be there it's, it's very different from a maestro coming in because nick uh ob obviously he, f he you know he feels like you know one of the players i remember um a particular project which was um a collaboration with the uh, klezmer band called uh Shikoya, and um for me, that was particularly terrifying because um, I had effectively no experience of the um, of klezmer music, and um, but it was so much fun. It really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, sorry, that was and to employ a cliche, but um, it was it was just it was the, the the concert. I will certainly never forget. There was an extended um, improvisation 
uh, a free improvisation for um, myself and the uh, klezmer clarinet player Susie Evans, um, and um, it was a it was a, a wonderful wonderful moment. And so you talk about pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, which I think is incredibly valid. Like as cliches go, would you say that that's something that's consistently happened with you with Aurora? Is that something that you feel sort of stimulated by your role within this orchestra? What Aurora has done really well is is just to is just to ask questions of classical music performance in general, not just classical music, but using um, using music to bring in new audiences, new ways of presenting music. Um, I mean, I remember initially when the memorized projects were uh, proposed, there was a lot of almost hostility from um, some areas of the um, of the established classical music world. Um, and um, but I think the question is more, why not? Why wouldn't you play from memory? Um, more rehearsal time, uh, more time spent with with the piece and the connection with with the um, with the with the um, colleagues, um, and it's about the the uh, product. And I think people who have been to the concerts, been to the memorized projects, um, I think they can see that that that, that it is bringing something new um, to these established pieces, which we've um, which people have been playing many many, many times before. Another memory of mine is um, certainly the um, uh, Beethoven Pastoral Symphony, which um, some people will have seen um, on YouTube now. And um, the um, clarinet extracts in that are performed very often in auditions. And um, having played it now from memory in the orchestra, um, I have to say that um, that the feeling of those particular extracts was um was completely um minimal compared to the actual uh, um focus of um learning the entire piece from memory would you say that that practice of committing entire symphonies to memory has informed your your work as a musician has it given you something do you think i've never experienced an atmosphere quite like before going on stage for a memorized prom. I think that the, um, I mean, clearly many people are terrified, but once the music starts, it really takes over. And there's no other way of justifying the, the amount of, um, re of re rehearsal time and how committing it is for every person. And you know that everyone is there because they, because they want to be there. They've spent hours and hours and hours with that particular piece. And I think that um, in a way, playing from memory, it's just a tool to allow all of those things to happen. I don't mind whether the music's there or not. I think it's about, it's about the feeling that the audience gets. And I do think that there's something about the process of memorizing and the rehearsal process that does change that. Tim, thank you so much. For joining me today and, and sharing your experiences and, and memories of performing this really special piece of music. Um, folks, you can watch it if you follow along the link at the end of this video. If you want to get a bit further under the skin of the music, there is also a join in with Jesse hashtag dance that I have created. I'd say that dance is quite a strong word for what it is, but it's sort of a movement and storytelling piece inspired by some of the melodic fragments of the first movement of Strauss's Ober Concerto really good for for young children but absolutely open to anyone who wants to have a go so you can watch along there'll be a link at the end of this if you would like to to join in with that um again thank you so much tim for joining me um see you soon thank you